You up for this? Yes, sir. Kill. The Xian. The Xian sword first appeared in China all the way back in the 7th century BC. Wisely designed, the sharp lethal tip was ideal for rapid cuts and stabs, while the wide body aided in deflecting attacks. Considered an elite weapon due to the amount of training needed to master the sword, the straight double-edged blade was built for subtle instant strikes, requiring a level of precision and finesse that only comes from a true swordsman. Because it was so difficult to master, the Xian was removed in mass from the battlefield. However, many are still involved in ceremonies and featured in films, including Crouching Tiger, Hidden Dragon. All right, Bladesmiths, welcome to Kill Test. Now, your Jian swords look beautiful, but are they deadly? Well, to find that out, I will take your weapon and do some slashes and thrusts on this ballistic dummy. Vince, you're up first. You ready? Yeah, for hell. All right, Vince, let's talk about your Gian sword up here. Overall, I like the aesthetics of this sword. Now, your handle construction is within scale of this blade. It's comfortable when I wrap around it. Now, your edge is razor sharp. In thrusting, it cuts out, and when you swing, you can feel the impact of this sword. Overall, sir, it will kill. Wanted to hear that. Good job. Hey, Casey, you got the stomach for this? You're next. I'm ready. All right, Casey, let's talk about your Gian sword here. First off, I like the lines that you have with your sword here and the Damascus pattern. I can appreciate that. And now, in cutting. It was so much fun just to be able to slice over and over and over with ease with a blade that moves. This, sir, will kill. Thank you. Bladesmiths, welcome to the strength test. Now to test the edge holding ability of your blades and the overall strength and construction, I'm gonna take each of your swords and smash them repeatedly into these heavy pots. Now, I'm not really concerned what your blades do to the pots, even though it's gonna look really cool and be a lot of fun. I wanna see what the pots are gonna do to your blades and edges. Vince, you're up first, you ready to go? Yes, sir. Oh, Vince, I gotta tell you, it's a great blade. I mean, where I was striking is still sharp, still straight and true, but the problem is doing your pommel, your threads here didn't go very far through, so pommel broke loose. Bit of a problem. Vince, your blade has suffered a catastrophic failure after three shots on the pots. A pummel is critical to a one-handed weapon's retention, but that doesn't mean that this competition is over. Casey, these are some pretty strong terracotta pots, and you'll have to survive three pot shots to make it out of here. I feel ready. All right, Jay, you ready? If the pots can knock off the pommel, they could do anything. It all comes down to this. I've got a little bit of knots in my stomach. We'll see what happens. Casey, congratulations, your blade survived. Vince, 
Unfortunately, you cannot continue testing. Please exit the forge. I'm disappointed. I think I made a hell of a blade. It was still sharp after the three terracottas, but the blade needs to be 100%. Mine was 98%, and it failed. Casey, congratulations. You are the Forge and Fire champion, and that's the title that comes with a check for 10,000 big ones, buddy. Congratulations. Thank you. The deed is done, and I won. Great steal and a great job on the handle, too. I've proven to myself that I can make a damn good blade. For me, that's nothing better. The Sword of Gujian. The Sword of Gujian is an exquisitely crafted Jian sword wielded by King Gujian, ruler of China's Kingdom of Yu. After brutal battles between the Yu and the Wu, King Gujian was forced into slavery in exchange for sparing his people. After three years of servitude, King Gujian rebuilt his empire, conquered the dwindling kingdom of Wu, and was bestowed this sword. Featuring a sharp lethal tip, intricate blue crystal, and turquoise guard, the sword was just as ornate as it was deadly. More than 2,500 years later, the sword was discovered by archaeologists in a remarkable condition. Still, with a razor-sharp edge, it has been called one of the most intact artifacts ever found. Bladesmiths, welcome to the kill test. To find out what kind of lethal damage your weapon will do according to its historic design, I will take your weapon, deliver some killing thrusts and blows on this ballistic dummy. Horace, are you up for this? Yes, sir. Let's do this. All right, Forrest, let's talk about your weapon here. And it's very forward heavy. What makes it hard to handle is the fact that you have a very skinny handle right here. A lot of these movements, your blade, when upon contact, was spinning in my hand. I had to adjust several times to make sure that I stay on the edge over here. Now, the edge is sharp. Once it makes contact and you slash, it digs deep. Overall, sir, you will kill. All right, Caleb, you're up. You ready? I see it. All right, Caleb, first up, the blade in itself, balance-wise, I think you nailed it. Now, your handle construction, it's ovoid, it's actively comfortable because of the balance and a very sharp edge. All the cuts are very, very deep. Overall, sir, it'll kill. Bladesmiths, welcome to the strength test, a gong chop. Test the strength and durability of your edges as well as the overall construction of your swords of Gujian. I'm gonna be chopping them into these gongs. Horace, you're up first, you ready? Yes, sir. Well, Forrest, your sword did take some damage on the edge. There's some rolls sort of crushed in right here. Your handle is really small. A bigger handle would have helped me control this really well. But all that being said, that much damage in a big strength test like this, well done. Thank you. All right, Caleb, you're up. You ready? Heck yeah, man.
Well, Caleb, he did a great job with the Damascus. I love to see this kind of stuff. It's beautiful. The blade is still straight true, and the weight on this is, is phenomenal. There is one big issue, though. Your handle. It's loose now. Your handle is coming apart. I can move it. And their pommel is, is also loose. If these were right and tight and held in place, then it tends to help everything else stay where it is. But just a little bit of play in this guard can send shockwaves right down the handle. But uh, got to say, that's one heck of a blade. Thank it's you. Just, Thank you. you know, this handle that's really causing the issue now. Yes, sir. So What's we've got on? a pretty mobile opening that has a corresponding split on the back side of the handle. Not only is it loose, but the material that's loose has sharp edges. OK. Yeah. I mean, this would require either taping that up or wearing a glove. And now we're not mm -hmm. testing the same as the other one. OK. Ben? That's a gorgeous sword. I think the handle's gone. Uh, Dave? I don't kills me. Uh, yeah. Okay. Doug? I agree. Mm -hmm. Now, we've continued with blades that had loose parts before. <clears throat> we've continued with blades that had split handles before. Your handle has cracked. However, the combination of the two things has made your blade unsafe to continue with any testing. And therefore, you cannot be our Forged and Fire champion. I'd like to invite you to shake our hands, shake your competitor's hand, and then I have to ask you to please leave the forge. I may not be the forge and fire champion, but man, I'm walking out of here with my head held high, and I'm proud. Forrest, congratulations. You are the forge and fire champion, and that is a title that comes with a check for $10,000, my friend. Good job. I'm on forward. I'm thrilled that I'm the champion. It hasn't even soaked in yet, and next day or two, I'll really realize what's happened. Being a Forge and Fire champion means that I succeeded in the goal that I wanted to reach. Oh, so this is for everyone at home, and I'm coming home a Forge and Fire champion. Yeehaw! The Keelong G. The Keelong G is a Chinese polearm made famous during the Han Dynasty in the second century. Over six feet long, the Keelong G featured a fierce point for stabbing and slashing. The crescent of the weapon was equally dangerous and could be employed to dismount oncoming cavalry or tear away enemy shields. A skilled user could also use the crescent portion to ward off enemy attacks. However, the Keelong G was at its deadliest when employed in mass, creating a terrifying spear wall that kept foes at a distance. The Keelong G is the famed weapon of Lu Bu, legendary warrior featured in the television series Three Kingdoms. To find out what kind of lethal damage your weapon will do, I will inflict lethal cuts and thrusts on both of these ballistics dummies. Jason, you're up first. You ready? Yes, sir. Let's do this. I've ever seen. All right, Jason, this weapon is fast. It's maneuverable. Your tip here is sharp enough to penetrate and lacerate on the way out. The only one issue here is that it did pick up a bend. But overall, your weapon, sir, will kill. Thank you. All right, Spicy Mike, you ready? <laughs> Let's do it. Let's do this. That's awesome. Did I do that? <laughs> Spicy Mike, you are a Kilong G. It's wide enough to break bone as I was thrusting into the chest cavity. It's a light, fast weapon, and most importantly, it will kill. Thank you. All right, gentlemen, 
Now it's my turn, the strength test. To test the strength and overall construction of your Keylon Gs, I will be using the crescent part of the blade to try to break off these spears. Then it's onto the drum stab using the front edge of that blade. Now remember, this test is not about what your blades do to the target, but what these targets can do to your blades. All right, Jason, you're up. You ready? Yes, sir. OK. All right, Jason, well, this has got some serious heft to it. That bend didn't change any. What I do like to see is the fact that your edges are just fine. This is a strong weapon. Definitely did what it's supposed to do. It's a good job. Thank you. All right, Michael, you ready? Yeah. Awesome. All right, well, your weapon is still in one piece. It's still sharp. It didn't lose any of that blade at all. So well done. Good weapon. Thank you. Blade Smiths, this is the sharpness test for the banner raise. Using the crescent's edge, I will cut the rope, thereby raising the banner. Then I will test your flamberge by slicing on the banner. Jason, you're first. You ready? Yes, sir. Let's do this. All right, Jason, your crescent blade is very sharp. It cut cleanly through the rope, one and done. The edges of your flamberge are sharp. The tip easily pierced it and sliced all the way down. Overall, sir, your weapon will cut. All right, Michael, your turn. You ready? Let's do it. Let's do this. All right, Mike, on your crescent blade, the edge is sharp. Your flamberge over here, the point is sharp, the edges are sharp. It was very easy to slide down. Overall, sir, your weapon will cut. Jason, Michael, you guys brought us exactly what we asked for, some high-performance finale weapons. They're both fantastic. But unfortunately, there can only be one Force and Fire champion. Mike, you are the new Forged and Fire champion. Jason, unfortunately, your weapon did not make the cut. You guys both brought us great weapons. But Jason, during the kill test, your weapon developed a bend, and that's a structural issue. That's why we're going to send you home. Yes, sir. Jason, please surrender your blade. I didn't come in here to finish second. I mean, honestly, I'm disappointed. But I gained a lot through this process. I'm going to take a little bit of a break, kind of regroup, and then decide what to do next. Spicy Mike, congratulations. You are our new Forge and Fire champion, and that is a title that comes with a check for $10,000. Good job, man. Oh, this is like the proudest moment of my entire life. Well, <laughs> congratulations, man. You did some fantastic work. Please present your blade to our judges. I, I, I won. I'm this crazy guy with a weird nickname from the middle of nowhere, so but. Much. I did it. Oh, what do I do? Where do I go? Go get money. <laughs> OK. I got to get some stuff paid off. But after that, I, I got to think about it. Oh. <sighs> Woo! The Ka-Ching Dao.
Kachin Dao was the weapon of choice for the Kachin tribe of Myanmar. Known for the disciplined fighting skills, the Kachin people used this terrifying slaughter tool to decapitate their enemies, leading them to become one of the most feared headhunting tribes in the world. The sharp single-edged blade flares out to a widened square tip that delivers lethal slashing blows and proves to still be a deadly weapon in popular television shows like Spartacus or The Damned. The Kachin Dao was used to battle the jungles in Burma. It was also a weapon used to give them the title of headhunters. To see what kind of damage your Kachin Daos will do, I will take your weapon and deliver slashing blows on this ballistic dummy. Sean, you're up first. You ready? Yes, sir. Let's do this. Jabo. Yeah, it does. Well, Sean, initial contact in here disemboweled this ballistics dummy. On a chop right here, it definitely chopped and cut all the way into the jaw. And on the backhand swing, you pretty much chop the skull open. The blade feels good in the hand. It lacerates, it moves well. Your weapon will kill. Rachel, it's your turn. You ready? Ready as ever. Let's do this. Coming out to testing really was like a reality check. And I just go, oh man, this is the time where they get to say whether I sink or swim. That's gonna do some real damage. We'll see. Wow, Rachel, it's rattling. I gotta ask you, what's your construction with your handle? That is a solid handle. And I did a wood pin, and then I wrapped it with rice glue. Okay, rice glue, so there's no epoxy here. I kept it traditional with traditional adhesives, and then the three layers of hemp wrap. The fact that you have a wooden pin in there and rice glue, it shouldn't move, it's traditional, and it's moving. And that's a big concern whether it's gonna stay there this competition. First and foremost, it's always about safety first. And the kind of force that I want to deliver over here is the kind of force that I deliver to that. So I don't want to hold back for fairness of testing. And I have no confidence that with everybody being this close and the amount of delivery I have to do on this dummy, it's, it's a big safety issue. Um, I'm really afraid that this knife is gonna fly out. I'm crushed. I wanted this weapon to be tested. I wanted to see what it could do, but I didn't get enough time to really test this thing. And uh, here's the end result. Rachel, Doug, and the other judges have issued me a vote of no confidence in your weapon's overall construction, which means that we cannot test it fairly compared to Sean's blade. And therefore, your blade did not make the cut. And I have to ask you, please leave the forge. My aim was historical accuracy, but it just came down to I did not use enough rice glue. My first time using it, this was a lot of first for me. My next step will be to make a worthy catching dough, and I want to hang it on my wall. I, I got you catching dough, you know, like now we're even. <laughs> Sean, congratulations. You are the Forged and Fire champion and will be receiving a check for $10,000. Good job. Thank you. Weapon's definitely a killer. How do you feel? I feel great. I mean, I would like to see that thing go through all the other challenges, but oh well. I'm just tickled to death. Well, congratulations. Thank you, sir. I'm very proud of what I've done. Good job. That's why I'm here, you know? Congratulations, sir. I won! Forge and fire! Yeah, baby. <laughs> I'd like to have that head right there. Here you go. <laughs> Butterfly swords. Bad ass. The butterfly sword, or Hu Dao, is a Chinese weapon developed in the mid-19th century. Short and slim, two of these blades could be carried in a single scabbard. Their small profile also allowed them to be concealed in a boot or the sleeve of a robe. The butterfly sword was forged with a wide belly, which made it an ideal chopping weapon. 
Chinese militiamen in the late 1830s were outfitted with butterfly swords, which allowed for deadly close quarters combat. Due to its versatility, it became a common weapon among many in China, including sailors, private guards, and martial artists. These weapons are also featured in one of the most popular kung fu films of all time, the 36th Chamber of Shaolin. Bladesmiths, the butterfly swords were designed to be short swords because they were supposed to be maneuverable in close quarter combat, and they were sharp. To test the sharpness of your blade, I will attempt to puncture, slash, and cut this trifecta of sandbags, sugarcane, and rope. Let's see how well your blades do. Shane, you're up first. Are you ready? I am, sir. Nice. Shane, your blade moves nicely. It can definitely slash and thrust to the sugar cane. It's sharp enough to cut. At the same time on the rope, I can shield and then cut the rope. This, sir, will cut. Good job. Thank you. Andy, you're up next. You ready? I'm ready. Let's do this. Good job. Whoa, smoked. Well, Andy, definitely you've got a nice point to puncture and lacerate. On the sugar canes, nice cut on my weaker side. And to use the blade as a shield, that feels good so I can deliver my power thrust. And it's sharp. This, sir, will cut. Good job. Thank you. Bladesmiths, this is the kill test. The butterfly sword, when sheathed, appears as one sword. But the minute you unsheath it, you have two swords. To see how lethal your butterfly swords are, I will deliver lethal blows on these ballistic dummies. Let's see how much damage your weapons can do. Shane, you're up first. You ready? I'm ready. Let's do this. Well, Shane, the lacerations in here will go deep into the bone and break it. At the same time, when you thrust, it goes deep into the bowels and cuts everything inside on its way out. This, sir, will kill. Great job. Thank you. Andy, you're up next. Ready? Yes, sir. Nice. Andy. The design of your blade lacerated this ballistic dummy deeply, and that would puncture a lung. And when I thrust the weapon, I completely disemboweled this dummy. This, sir, will kill. Great job. Thank you. Gentlemen, your final test is the strength test. The butterfly swords come from southern China. Now, though they were used by the military, primarily, they are a civilian weapon. Now, to test the strength of your blades, I'm going to take six chops into this ice block. Now, if they're strong enough, that edge should hold up. Shane, you're up first. Are you ready? I'm ready. All right, let's do this. All right, Shane, well, your edges held up beautifully. The weapon still feels nice and tight and well put together. What I do like is the fact that I can hold this weapon in one hand. Uh, question for you. You only sharpened the two thirds of that blade. Is there a reason? The research that I did said that only the bottom third of that blade would not be sharpened because of the monks didn't want to kill somebody. They would want to thump them and not kill a person. I learned the same thing, but if it was when you reversed it that that, so you don't put a finger on that edge when you reverse that blade. But nice design. Well done, sir. Thank you, sir. Andy, you're up. Yes, sir. <laughs> OK. <laughs> A little wet. <laughs> hey, your edges feel great. Feel fine. I really like what you did with the uh, fullering. Thank you. A couple of things. The back arms are just a little tight. I can't quite get underneath that. I like what you did carrying them up there and putting that detail on it, though. But the biggest concern I have is I, I can't, I can't hold that as as one sword. I wouldn't be able to draw that cleanly from a scabbard. Generally, though, I mean, they feel good in the hand. 
It's a good job. They held up well. Thanks, Dave. Nicely done. Andy, Shane, you've both done some outstanding work. In this competition, there can only be one Forged and Fire champion. And that champion is... Shane, congratulations. You are the Forged and Fire champion. Good job. Thank you. Congratulations, brother. Well fought battle, bud. Absolutely. Andy, your blades did not make the cut. Andy, you turned in a beautiful blade. It performed great on the sharpness test, on the kill test, and on the strength test. This has been one of the toughest decisions we've ever made. So much so that we had to look at more of the historic characteristic of a butterfly sword. They're designed to fit together, to almost yield it as one sword. And yours didn't fit as well as Shane's. And for that reason, we'll have to let you go. Shane made a couple of excellent blades, and he deserves it. This is Andy Olm, over and out. Shane, congratulations. You are the Forged and Fire champion and will be receiving a check for $10,000. Good job. Thank you. I'm feeling wonderful. This is the moment I've been waiting for. The journey is the fun part, you know? I'm very happy. So what are you going to do with the money? I have a family that sacrificed a lot. So we'll have a family council, and they will decide. That's awesome. <laughs>